Good evening, friends. Uh, welcome to my channel. I am Atikul Rahman and AWS Certified DevOps Engineer. I've been working with uh, AWS DevOps, Docker, Kubernetes, etc. for the last five or six years. So today I'm going to tell you about uh, what is a uh, Docker image and how can you use uh, ECR to secure your Docker image and store in a um, Docker uh, kind of a repository, private repository, and what are the best practices of using ECR. So, uh, today I'm going to use uh, chat GPT. This is kind of like uh, new, uh, new thing that got the internet. Uh, everyone is talking about chat GPT. So I'm going to use chat GPT to write some script for a Python uh, using Flux. And then I'm going to create a Docker file, create a Docker image rather locally, and then push it to the PCI. And I'm going to tell what are the best practices for it. So um let's uh go to chat gpt and i'm already creating uh one comment so i just asked write a python flex app with a docker file to run so that generated me the everything so actually i just need to copy paste these things but let me explain <laughs> so i need to create a abroad pay pi file which is actually going to be my main uh, flux file where I'm uh, importing Flux JSON file, then I'm initializing the Flux app, I'm creating my basic out, definitely a function, and then returning the message format. That's it. That's it, right? And then in the Docker file, what I'm going to do is uh, like using Python 3 by sling cluster. That's good. I can use different ones, but that is going to be fine. So copy uh, everything. Blah, blah, blah. A couple of things they have missed out, but that's okay. So, um, one other thing they missed out is um, right here Docker ignore file and requirements required. So, yeah, two things they have missed out, but if you know what these files are, you can manually create it. Also, you can ask chat GPT to create the basic version of it. So this is the Docker ignore file. So Docker ignore file is, it's a kind of a like uh, for gate ignore, but it's for the Docker. So what gate ignore does is, it is excluding those files, folders from the git uh, change list. Docker ignore is similar. It is also excluding this files folder when you are copying it. So when we are like copy this all local to app, then they copy everything, but they exclude these ones. And the benefit is that uh, you don't want to like move the dot .git folder, right? What's the purpose? The, uh, the advantage is that uh, if you uh, don't ignore these files, what will happen is that even if you don't change anything in your mail application, but still the whole build process will start from scratch because uh, if you make some changes, then this uh, process will start from here. Otherwise, uh, if there is no changes in the your application file, then all those lines will be cached. And only thing that will run is like this part and this part and this part because these are, there is no change. If, if there is no change, then Docker will cache it. So copying file, if, if they see that there is no change in the local directory, so they will not copy everything. They will just use the cache part. So they will use this cache, this is cached. So this saves a lot of uh, build time, but also uh, it makes the app very faster. So, okay, but uh, I think these, these are uh, pretty much basic things. Okay, now let's create those files. First one is uh, app.py. So, I'm in my VS code where I'm going to use app.py for this to the contents. Then I'm going to use the Docker file. Okay. Then I'm going to create the um, Docker ignore, right? dot so it's it's dot docker ignore okay so remember and the requirements dot txt 
so uh, because I think short of time, so they just forget it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome that they have generated the app, they have generated the Docker file, everything is okay. So this is it, right? Now, what I'm going to do is then I'm going to test for that as well. So, I'm not, so let's do a data virtual environment, okay? I'm going to uh, data virtual That's the beauty, right? Uh, if you see in the Docker environment, they kind of ignore the virtual environment. This build go to school virtual environment in my Docker environment. So I don't need to copy that virtual environment, right? That's that's the point. So uh this is Python three uh minus three and three So this is the folder. It can be anything like that. Just do the Oops, 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 oops. So, uh, yes, okay. it is creating the virtual environment. Done so. So, we see a folder. So, we have virtual environment created. Then, I'm going to activate the virtual environment. How to do that? Let's say just a million I mean, Windows, the commands might be quite yes scripts and activate so this is the path for windows remember the linux path is the different right so um, clear the screen now what we are going to do is uh hit three install minus r requirements txt that will install all the requirements okay yeah that's not by this you can exclude it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, that's the installation part. Clear the screen and again, uh, uh, Python. Apply. It should run on about five thousand. And is it have what lessons? Okay, it works fine. Now I will run the Docker desktop. So you need to start the Docker desktop, and then instead of being started, I can actually then run the Docker build command because if the Docker uh, desktop is not ready, then we cannot run the Docker. So we have to wait it. But for Linux, it will transfer over as background. So that is how we we close this sometimes. That's what I'm this problem when the connection of the screen gets stuck. We start on the text of the button. It should be okay. Stop starting. So uh, let me try to run the car. Bail minus P. Okay. Plus. Yeah, okay, that has been started. Sounds good. Uh, let's see. So I don't have anything on Python 3.8 on the local, but it's a small, it's very small. It seems maybe not more than five. Uh, yeah. I guess. But you can see that, that's the size. But it's the slimmest one. If you don't use Slim Buster, then the size becomes 400. That's why they very big. Okay, this might take some time. So let me uh, tell you about what are the uh, benefits of using ECR. So one of the benefits of using ECR is that IEM based authentication. So you can segregate the access of your ECR images based on IAM users or role. For example, 
we want to give access to these uh, ECR repos to some users, and we don't want to give access to some other users. We can do that by IEM. So this is ECR, and uh, in the IEM for users' permissions or uh, policies, you can attach the ECR uh, read only policy, read write policy, so that either they can use these uh, Docker images that is you have, and if you don't want to some users to access your ECR, then you can just do this. So that's fun. Using the IAM authentication, you can make more secure your Docker images. The next part is uh, image scanning and signing. So as I told you before, uh, AWS has AWS Inspector, we can, which can inspect the Docker images for vulnerabilities and uh, malicious uh, packages, malicious images, all those things. So it's kind of like uh, security scanning. That's, that's good. That's better. You can use encryption. So what is this? It's like uh, these Docker images are stored in AWS and you can use encryption at rest using KMS. So KMS is a key management system and you can use KMS to encrypt your Docker images. And you can regularly monitor and audit your uh, Docker images in AWS ECR. So these are the benefits. I hope uh, I have able to explain you these things better, but uh, if you need some more uh, guidance, you can just read the recommendations here. So uh, our image build part is done. So now uh, Docker run minus p. I'm going to work on the So I think that's that's the one. That is the one. Yeah, that is the one. And we're going to make the rules 5,000 and it should show a little message. Okay. So our image is good. Right? Our image is good. What we have to do is now push this image to ECR. Okay. But how can we do this? Uh, I'm in the ECR. So if you click here, this here. You should uh, come to the Elastic Container Registry and then here. Click on repositories, then there are repositories for private and public. I'm in the private because I'm going to push a private image. So click a new repository. So give it a name. I think uh, last. That's with the name that I'm going to use. So these are the options that I told you. Like uh, I want the KMS enabled, right? So then I'm to scan and push, right? So these are the things that uh, that makes the process very secure. So uh, let's say your images are stored in AWS and uh, somehow um, those uh, like the actual files has been kind of stolen by malicious or uh, bad people, administrators. If you have KMS in enabled, then they, they won't be able to use your images because it's encrypted. Only you, you can, or your account can be created. You can make it more secure by using your custom KMS key structures that later on. So uh, that's it. Let's see. Okay, so here I'm going to the details of this, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a view uh, push commands. So uh, here uh, the steps are given. Uh, how you can use these um, commands to push your Docker images. So I'm going to first copy this command line and uh, run the implementation. Okay, so VS code is kind of like stuck. So Okay, so now um, I'm going to run this. Um, but before that, I need to uh, 
configure my AWS and CLI. So uh, I have to go to IAM. So I go back. I need to go to IAM and uh, generate an IAM access key and the uh, secret key and the access key and secret key to configure it on a local machine. And then you can only use it to push the images to the CLI. So I'm going to uh, users and user. So next, I'm going to uh, use some existing boxes. So it is just so search and then uh, Amazon is to container registry full access. This is the one that I need to do for create users. And what I have to do is go to the users, go to security credentials, and create access keys. So AWS CLI as the first. So, copy this. I'm going to run it. Uh, AWS on power. That's one. I'm, I'm going to delete this access key and secret key after the video has been created. So, don't get excited. Okay. Because yeah, uh, there's nothing to be hacked on this. So, uh, it is AP South, I guess. So, um, I have configured it. Now I'm going to go to the registry. We push commands and we're going to just copy this part. So um, this is it. So are we able to log into the CLI? Yes, login successful. It's okay. Then uh, what I'm going to do, we have run this Docker build that it plus. So what I'm going to do is this part tagging the image. So um return. And then I'm going to do a push. It's pushing the images to ECR. And uh, this is relatively faster. Somehow they push multiple part images parallelly. It makes things very faster. So my image size is not that much. Big, open, 67, still big, 69 megabytes. Because like Python packages that I'm installing, they also consume some space, etc. So, but it's still less than 100 megabytes. Is I consider smaller for so open images. If it's like more than 100, it's I'm going to worry about, and then I'm going to try to use a slim version, like base image. And that should be uh, okay. Mission is done now. Let's press it and then refresh this thing. There it is. We have the this tag size 48. This is the digest. This image URL. Now you can use this image URL inside your uh, AWS so you can use EC2 Kubernetes, uh, like ECS. Fargate, all those things, you can use this image and uh, kind of, uh, if, if they have permission, they can use this image and run your very well Hello World application. So that being said, what I have learned today. So what we have learned today, we have learned uh, how to um, create uh, a Python Plus application using ChatGPT, how to create a Docker file, how to create Docker Ignore and requirement.txt file, how to uh, create ECR repositories, or the push images into ECR, and what are the benefits of using ECR, and how can you scan images, how can you set uh, encryption into the ECR, etc. That being said, 
that's it for today i uh, hope you like this video please subscribe to my channel so that i can get inspiration to create more videos like this thank you have a nice day bye bye